Migration, huge topic for you to choose. So I reckon we ought to start by talking about why people migrate in the first place. So if you're ready to get them brain cows milked, intervening obstacle style, let's get to it. So first, as is proper, let me throw some definitions at you. When we talk about migration, we're referring to the movement of people from one place to another. And then two other related terms you'll hear that will likely confuse your crap all the way down are as follows, emigration and immigration. So suppose I'm migrating from country A to country B. As I leave country A, I'm emigrating, but when I arrive to country B, I am immigrating. This one refers to leaving and this one refers to arriving. They're both talking about the same journey, but from different perspectives. Okay, now let's consider why I would want to move from country A to country B at all. In other words, what causes people to migrate? I mean, let's be honest, it is a massive pain in the hind parts to uproot your life from one place and go make a home in another. So why in the world would anybody do it? Well, there are essentially two factors that determine whether a person or a group is going to migrate. But before I tell you what they are, let me just mention that if you need help getting an A in your class and a five on your exam in May, then you might want to check out my AP Human Geography Heimler Review Guide. It's got exclusive unit review videos, note guides to follow along, practice questions, practice exams, and answer keys for every dang bit of it. So, you know, if that's something you're into, then check it out in the description. Anyway, first are push factors, which refer to any negative experiences that motivate people to leave their home. In other words, these are factors that push them out. So, perhaps people migrate because war has broken out in their country and they no longer feel safe there. For example, when Russia invaded Ukraine in 2022, the destruction and insecurity of the situation has caused about 6 million Ukrainians to migrate to other European countries and throughout the world. Or perhaps natural disasters cause people to migrate. For example, Hurricane Katrina devastated New Orleans in the surrounding area in 2005, causing the migration of over a million Americans to other U.S. states. Okay, second are pull factors, which refer to attributes of another place that attract migrants. So maybe the reason I migrate into country B is because there aren't enough jobs in country A, but country B has loads of them. And that might pull me right along to relocate there. Or pull factors can also include the desire for freedom under a stable government. And the thing to remember about push and pull factors is that they rarely occur in isolation. People who choose to migrate are always going to experience some combination of pull and push factors in order to get them to move. But here's where I tell you that migration from point A to point B usually doesn't happen all at once because migrants almost always encounter intervening obstacles and intervening opportunities. Intervening obstacles refer to challenges migrants encounter on their way to their desired destination. And a good example here is distance. All things being equal, the further away a migrant's destination, the harder it's going to be to complete that migration. And this is especially the case for impoverished migrants for whom long distance travel is expensive and that's going to be an obstacle in their journey. Another intervening obstacle would be immigration policies in the destination country. For example, the United States has always been a desirable destination for immigrants throughout the world. But over the course of history, policies have been passed that either allow or restrict immigration. For example, if you happen to be a Chinese immigrant to the United States during the second half of the 19th century, then you would have encountered a giant honking intervening obstacle in the form of the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882. And basically, this just amounted to a law that banned any further Chinese immigration to the United States. But don't worry, it's not all obstacles because migrants also encounter intervening opportunities along their journey. And these refer to opportunities migrants encounter on their journey, which may affect their ultimate destination. So here's where I tell you that for the most part, people migrate in phases and not all at once. And so if my journey from country A to country B is a long way and I can't afford to make the whole trip, then maybe I stop in country C while I save up to make the second half of the journey. But suppose I find a good job in country C and a relatively happy life. It might be that this intervening opportunity causes me to settle there permanently, or maybe I stay there for a while before moving to country B. Okay, now let's bring all of this together and talk about the five categories of push and pull factors and intervening opportunities and obstacles. First, these factors can be cultural, and a good example of this would be the Great Mormon Migration in the United States in the 19th century. Now, at that time, Mormonism had freshly arrived on the scene, and its adherents were the subject of violence in Illinois, Missouri, and other northeastern states. In class, what does that sound like? Uh, push factor? On the nose, me from behind the cabinet. And so these Mormons had their eye on the Utah Territory, which had many attractive qualities, which is to say pull factors, the most significant of which is that it was isolated and they'd be left the heck alone. So they migrated, and to this day, Utah has the highest concentration of Mormons anywhere. Second, these factors can be demographic. For example, we've talked a lot about countries characterized by rapid growth populations, which also tend to be economically less developed places. So with all those people, it can be hard to find a job. That's a push factor. But then you've got developed countries characterized by aging populations, and their workforce is getting a little thin, and so they need workers, which is a pull factor. And then third, these factors can be economic. And here's where I tell you that of all the reasons people migrate, usually at the top of the list is jobs. Like, people migrate for work. For example, there was a massive rural to urban migration movement in China in the middle of the 20th century. As farms became more mechanized and thus required fewer workers, rural people began moving to the urban areas to find work in massive numbers. Or another example was the Bracero Program, which was an agreement between the Mexican and U.S. government during World War II. And because the U.S. was busy mobilizing for the war and getting ready to blow a bunch of crap up, agriculture and transportation jobs were going unfilled, and as a result, over 4 million Mexican workers came across the border to fill those vital roles. Fourth, these factors can be environmental. Now, earlier I mentioned the mass migration that occurred after Hurricane Katrina, and that's a good example here. But migration doesn't only occur because of natural disasters. It may be that people migrate because the climate of a region is more desirable than their current climate.
claim. For example, in the middle of the 20th century, many Americans participated in what became known as the Sun Belt Migration. Now, a large part of this migration occurred because jobs were more abundant in this region than they were in the Midwest and Northeast. But another big factor was that people were just tired of the butt-cold winters in the North and wanted to move to the Southern states, which had milder winters. And fifth, these factors can be political. For example, people may migrate when an oppressive political dictator comes to power. This happened when Hugo Chavez became the president of Venezuela in 1999. Now, as far as dictatorial turds go, Chavez certainly wasn't the stinkiest in world history, but his systematic silencing of the press and suppression of his critics and restricting of various other civil liberties caused a mass migration of people out of the country seeking lives under other political regimes with more freedom. And then war is another political factor that pushes people to migrate. For example, the Syrian civil war, which began in 2011, has been responsible for the emigration of more than 5 million Syrians seeking safer conditions elsewhere. Okay, click here to keep reviewing my other Unit 2 videos, and click here to grab my AP Human Geography Heimler Review Guide, which has everything you need to get an A in your class and a 5 on your exam in May. And I'll catch you on the flip-flop. Heimler out.